Hey Hair Lounge community, it's Angelina here at the Hair Lounge. Today I'm going to show you how I do baby highlights on my own hair. That way, if you decide to cheat on your own hairstylist and you want to try it at home, at least you can have a few tips and tricks to try out. Stay tuned and I'll get right into it. If you enjoy learning about hair, click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified for all my new videos. For this video, I'll be using my tint bowl, my Paul Mitchell tint brushes, the Paul Mitchell Blonde Synchro Lift 20 and 30 volume, my pink Fermar foils, some butterfly clips, a duck bill clip, and my trusty weaving comb. I already did my synchro lift inside the tint bowls. I only did a half of scoop in each side. This side will have 20 volume and this side will have 30. I normally like my consistency to be similar to cake frosting. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that now. As you can see, I already mixed this one. Like I said, very close to frosting for a cake. I will show you how I do this one. This is my 30 volume. The reason I do different volumes is because on each side of my head, I want them to process close to the same time. So I bump up my volume on my very last section. Now we are finished and we can start sectioning. To begin, I did take my hair out of my ponytail. Don't mind the wildness. I was doing yard work this morning. So my ponytail kind of put all these bumps in it, but I just parted it on the part that I normally part on. Um, the reason why I do this instead of doing it in the middle is because I never part in the middle. So if you do part in the middle or you switch sides, part it in the middle. But if you always keep it on one side, I always like to highlight my hair on the side that I part. That way those highlights on my actual part line are right at the root. So whenever I section my hair, I just go off of the way I actually part it. Then I try to go from really kind of my um, top section to the top part of my ear. I don't go back super far um, into my actual like crown area. And the reason is, is the further back you go when you're highlighting your own hair, the harder it is to actually get it on there. So I'll kind of show you how I get my crown area whenever I'm highlighting it. But like, as you can see, I mean this section maybe towards the front, but pretty much the rest of this is just all my natural color minus my very top crown area. So use my butterfly clip and I'm gonna go ahead and clip this out of my face until I get my other section done. Okay, then I will do the same thing on this side using the rat tail part of my weaving comb. Not going back super far into the crown, still kind of matching what I did on this right side or the left side, you're right, to my right side. Okay, and clipping this hair out of the way. Let's see which way do I wanna go with this. I'll do it away from my face. And I'll just steal the clip from the back. Pretty simple. Then I will undo this side of the clip. And this is the section or side I'm going to start on. All the rest of my hair that I am not going to weave right now, I like to just pull this back into a clip. That way, while I'm sectioning or weaving, I'm not grabbing any hair I'm not supposed to. 
I just recently got my hair cut. I think it was on Friday and today is Tuesday. So it's a little shorter than what I'm used to. So I, every time I run my hands through my hair, I feel like I'm supposed to have more length. Shout out to Sabrina um, for cutting it for me. I'm super excited to see kind of what it looks like because to be honest, I didn't really do anything it, with it this weekend. Okay, back to foiling. So let me get a tiny bit closer. So as you can see, I have not highlighted my hair since the very beginning of June. So I have a decent amount of regrowth. I want to keep it fairly simple um, and do more of like the baby lights just because it seems to grow in a little bit nicer. Um, I also like to keep my natural being my low lights in my hair and we're going into fall. So I feel like the baby lights will be a good kind of transition. For my very first section, I like to get it as close to my scalp as I possibly can doing a very small subsection. So I'll take my weaving comb and do a very, very small section of hair. Pretty see-through as you can see because I want it to be as close to my scalp as possible. Again, this is gonna be a micro stitch or a baby weave, but I like to keep this hair, I like to keep just a tiny, tiny bit of hair out towards the front of my hairline. That way it doesn't show whenever it's growing out. And then just doing a very small micro stitch or baby weave. Grabbing my foil. on the right side and lifting this hair up completely vertical from my scalp and tucking that foil right in. The reason why you hold that hair all the way up is that's going to make it so your foil can get really tight in on that scalp. So now I'm going to grab my 20 volume, tiny bit on my tint brush and just kind of tap it in. I'm taking my tint brush at an angle and just using one side of the actual tint brush to get that close to my scalp and then just feathering it down into the rest of my hair. That way I don't have any lines. Then we will fold this foil up and flip it up and out of the way. Closest to my actual part on my hair, I do like to keep my sections kind of closer together. So that means I'm not going to leave as much hair in between the foils as I will, you know, further into my hair. I feel like these baby lights are gonna be a good transition into fall because I can leave a lot of my natural out in between the foils and so it has kind of more of a lived in look. But again, closest to my part, keeping those subsections very, very thin, very see-through and doing my micro tiny stitch. Again, kind of keeping it somewhat close to the hairline but not right on the hairline. As you can see with this, little stitch, I did leave a tiny bit more space in between my actual weave because I want my natural hair to be a little bit closer to my, um, like my low lights. Get my foil onto my comb. Again, holding that section up vertical and Pulling that foil as close to my scalp as possible. Getting a tiny bit on my tint brush and feathering it in. Again, holding this tint brush using just the very edge of my actual brush to feather it into my roots. and folding this foil up.
my first three foils will be fairly close together just because I like the brightness right on my part line. And then the further down, I'll kind of separate um, or do bigger sectioning in between just so I can have those um, kind of the natural, my natural hair be those low lights and giving me depth and dimension. So now this section, I'm gonna do a tiny bit larger than my other sections, just because we're getting away from that part line. Again, going fairly close to the hairline, but leaving that hair right on that front, kind of around my face. I like to leave just a tiny, tiny bit out of my actual stitch so I don't get that line right close to my face. And see how that section got a little bit large. Just pull some of that hair out. Grab in the foil. Still using 20 volume. Holding that brush at an angle and feathering it into my regrowth or my roots or the hair closest to my scalp, however you want to say it. And folding this foil up. Okay, so now that I have about three foils closest to my hairline, I'm gonna take my sections a tiny bit bigger in between. Again, I do hair for um, a living, and so I know what I'm doing. So if you are not a licensed stylist, proceed with caution because this is hard to do. I mean, as you can see, even doing it on my own hair, I'm taking my time, I'm taking, you know, small sections, I'm not rushing through it because it is hard to do on yourself. As you know, when you're looking in a mirror, everything seems backwards. So I've been highlighting my hair for, I don't know, maybe seven years now. So practice makes perfect and it's a lot harder to do than it actually looks. So I do it on my own hair, like I said, because I know what I'm doing, but if you're doing this for the first time on your own hair, like I said, just proceed with caution. Um, you can do kind of just on your hairline um, or on your part to kind of hold you over it in between when your stylist does it. But if you have no idea about hair color or bleach or anything like that, I don't recommend you doing this to your own hair. But if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to subscribe or hit that like button and kind of tell me what you think of watching me doing my own hair. Like I said, I do hair, so this is a little easier for me, but it still takes me a while to do my own hair because it's just easier to do it on someone else. Okay, again, still larger sections in between, but keeping my weave as a smaller micro stitch or smaller um, kind of weave sections meaning they're not super chunky looking. They're just gonna blend super, super easily. And I will use 20 volume all on this left side of my head. The reason why is this is my heavier side. Um, so I have more hair on this side. So it's just gonna take me a little bit longer. And then whenever I switch to my opposite side of my head, that's when I will use the 30 volume. Okay, then 
I'm going to just continue all the way down. I will stop and kind of show you guys what I do around my hairline, um, but we still have a few foils to go. As you guys can see, I finished and now I'm getting to the part of where my hair naturally kind of recesses right here. Um, I have super fine hair around the front of my hairline. And as you guys know, I have a little bit of postpartum hair loss. So this hair right here is super, super fine and kind of thin. So I like to take this section and foil it a tiny bit differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of hold it up and away from my face and then I'm gonna take a very, very thin section. And when I say thin, it's thin. I'm gonna take this and use my butterfly clip. Clip that out of the way. And as you can see, it's very, 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 very thin. But the reason why you want it very thin is because these are kind of baby hairs or just kind of a fine section. And so if you weave this too thick, you're gonna get stripes. So I am taking just really kind of the tiny, 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 tiny little hairs and almost just doing, this will make it look kind of sun-kissed. So that way it blends super nicely whenever I pull my hair back and away from my face. So as you can see, there's hardly any hair on that foil. That's what we want because it's gonna blend super nicely and you're not gonna see those tiger stripes or any of those harsh lines when I pull my hair back. So I'm gonna do a couple foils like that, still keeping it very, very thin. Again, this helps keeping that hair behind clipped back so that way you're not grabbing hairs you don't want to. Still a very thin section so you can still see through it. I always like to pull this hair kind of towards my face while I'm doing my actual weave and then I foil or paint on the bleach the opposite way. So still a very, very, very thin weave. making sure I'm separating that section. Okay, and then we'll just continue back doing exactly the same thing as these two. As you can see, I finished foiling. I have about five foils in this front kind of section right above my ear. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip all these foils back over because we are going to now move on the other side. So now we will move on to my right side, your guys' left and we will be using 30 volume. We're gonna be doing exactly the same thing as we did on this left side as a right side, keeping the first probably three foils super close together and not as much hair in between. And then kind of once we start making our way down, we're gonna do bigger sections in between my foils. Then once we kind of get closer to where my hair starts kind of going from receding, we'll do that super, super thin section and do kind of those micro baby lights just right super close together, really close to my hairline. I'm not gonna talk as much on this one, I'll just let you guys watch.
So now we are kind of to that part that I had done previously in front of my ear. So I wanted to show you guys kind of where I started doing my sectioning like this. And same thing, super, super, super fine. As you can see, you can see right through that. Okay, again, I won't be talking much because it's exactly the same as the other side. So I will show you on this foil, as you can see, I kind of got a little bit on my scalp. So you want to make sure you're rubbing that off, pulling that foil up and kind of wiping those little hairs off that it's not supposed to be on or else you will get spots. So you want to make sure you are wiping that off. So since this side is my thinner side, it's the side that I don't part on. All my hair goes over to the left. I'm going to do the foiling a tiny bit different. So I did these first three, you know, closest to my ear, closest to my hairline. But then I'm gonna go back to my regular foiling since as you can see, there's still a decent amount of hair that needs to be foiled. So now I'm gonna go back to doing it horizontal, horizontally versus diagonal. And these are the ones that I will be taking bigger sections in between just because I um, want kind of my natural hair to be those low lights. So don't forget we're doing that Similar to what we did on the left side, but now we're doing it on the right. It's just in a different foil pattern. And we'll continue that all the way down. We finish with this side, so I'm just folding all these foils back down and over, and we are going to move on to my crown area. So, like I showed you guys before, I don't really foil anything past, you know, really from the my ears forward, and I leave this back section. But now is when I'm going to actually start foiling it. I take all these foils and I start kind of just folding the corners in. That way I can start my weave. So instead of using my actual comb, I do take my fingers and kind of section it that way because it's kind of at an angle with the way that I part my hair. And this is probably the hardest part because obviously you can't see the back of your head. So I just do it by feel and still keeping to that super, super micro weave and still using 30 volume. So I have it all sectioned, holding that section super vertical, tucking that foil in and laying it down flat on the back of my head. Again, still using 30 volume and I can still kind of see the top of my foil, so I'm not going all the way to the top. I'm just kind of winging it, if you will, and putting it on my actual hair and feathering it kind of down. Holding the foil up, I'm able to actually feather it now into closer to my actual scalp. Again, you don't want to get it on your scalp, so you want to be very careful. And then feather it into those ends and go ahead and Fold this foil up. Okay, as you can see, I still use my thumb as my sectioning tool because like I said, it's still kind of at an angle because of the way I part my hair. And moving on to my next section. This is the point where your arms and your shoulders are burning. It's a good shoulder workout. 
Because to hold your hands up like this all the time for the last, you know, probably 30 minutes of me foiling, it definitely starts to burn. This will probably be my last section. all finished and that is how I get my crown area foiled so now obviously those last few foils that I did I have to let those sit on I will normally take my hand dryer my super freak um, dryer and I'll just do it over those last few foils this is where I rinse out my shampoo bowl um, not shampoo bowl sorry my tint bowl um, and then I will mix up my toner but I like to have these back foils that I just put on sit on for probably about 10 minutes. So I will be back and I will show you what I'm gonna mix for my toner. Stay tuned. For toning my hair, I will still be using the Paul Mitchell color line. I will be using on my ends, which I want to be lighter than the rest, 10BV, 10V, a little bit of clear and processing solution. So these two, it'll be half and half. I will do a quarter of an ounce of the clear and then equal parts processing solution to my color. Then for at my scalp, I will be using 9V and 9BV, one ounce of 9BV and a half an ounce of 9V with equal parts processing solution. So my foils are ready. As you can see, I'll open them up. They have become pretty close to my um, ends. These back ones are good. Same with this side. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the shampoo bowl and I'm just gonna shampoo my hair. I'm not going to apply conditioner. I'm just gonna rinse all the bleach out, shampoo it really, really good, and then stay tuned for my toning video. Okay, you guys, this is now the final look after doing those baby lights on my own hair. As you can see, it's very, very, very close to my regrowth or my scalp. And then further kind of down into my hair, I've separated those sections a little bit wider so you still see a lot of my natural color in there. And then I'll kind of show you my hairline. So with taking those super, super fine, fine sections, as you can see, it blends seamlessly. I don't have tiger stripes. Show you this other side. No tiger stripes. It just blends really nicely. Kind of section so you can see. Through here, I have a lot more of my natural color for depth. And then closer to my part, it's a lot brighter since we did those highlights very close together on my part. And then same with my crown, just a few highlights back through the crown. That way when my hair is styled, you don't see any regrowth. I hope you guys liked this video of me highlighting my own hair. Again, don't forget, I am a professional hairstylist, so you need to take extra caution if you decide to do this on your own hair. Sometimes you should just leave it in the hands of the professional. Thanks for stopping by. Leave a comment down below and tell me if you like this video and we will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit the like. Bye.